Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. This video is going to be about seven ways that you can stop the narcissist having any impact of your life or in your life. Thank you very much to all the returning subscribers and your continued support. If you are new to the channel, this channel is all about the narcissist personality disorder to give you more understanding of the people you might be dealing with in your life how to handle yourself around those people if you cannot go no contact and different methods to find what works for you to help you recover from narcissistic abuse. If you do find the information helpful on the channel, please do subscribe. So one of the best methods when it comes to recovering from narcissistic abuse is to go no contact. This isn't always possible. So we have to find ways to stop them having a negative impact on who we are as a person and the life which we would like to live. Narcissistic abuse has devastating effects, not only on our mental health, but also our physical health, also our financial health and our abilities within ourselves, the way we think, the way we see the world around us, our trust within ourselves and our trust within other people. Narcissists drive people out of their own minds and leave people believing that they are the ones that are going crazy. Narcissists destroy people through gaslighting, projection, silent treatments, invalidation, devaluation, discarding, blame shifting. Those silent treatments and coercive controlling behaviour. Some also do use physical violence. It's very, very difficult to get out of a toxic relationship. And once out, a narcissist can come at you with game after game. So while you're trying to heal from the trauma bonding, CPTSD, codependency that the narcissist within your life might have trained you into being, anxiety, depression, feeling emotionally drained. The narcissist can still try to destroy you through their never-ending smear campaigns. And a narcissist will use whatever weakness you have against you. They will use the things that you care about the most as they know these are the things that you are most likely to most passionately defend. They know through their smear campaigns how to get you going so that you react to them so that they can show other people your reactions yet miss out their behaviour. No contact or grey rock is the first and foremost step to help you recover from narcissistic abuse. The first step is to safely get away from the situation and then it needs to be no contact or grey rock. When it comes to narcissistic people, they feel entitled to be a part of your life, whether that is exploiting you out of something or destroying you in some way. So narcissists don't like to leave you in peace. They don't like to leave easily. They like to try and hover around because they believe they're entitled. They want that excessive ad admiration. They prefer positive attention, but if they cannot get positive attention, they will provoke you to react negatively so that they can gain sympathy from somebody else. Neuroscientists have discovered that narcissistic abuse can actually affect our brains. Your hippocampus shrinks, which is responsible for your memory. So when a narcissist is gaslighting you and your memories aren't quite how they should be, it's very easy to start questioning yourself and not the narcissist. It grows your amygdala, which is responsible for things like our emotions, such as Fear. So when we're living in a state of hypervigilance, when we've gone into fight, flight, freeze or fawn mode and our amygdala has expanded, our emotions are going to be all over the place, making it far easier for us to react to a narcissist baiting. So how can you stop the narcissist having any impact in your life while you're trying to heal? 
It's about taking several steps to help you. These steps are a learning process. They are a learning curve. We tend to learn from mistakes, unfortunately. So we have to keep going to find what works for us as an individual. So no contact is the first step. Removing yourself from the source of your pain is not an easy thing to do. But with things like the trauma bonding, we have to lose the addiction of that person by taking the step of going no contact. And it's like giving up any addiction. It's a process. You start with day one, you work through day two, you get through day three, you make it through day four, and you keep going through day five, day six, day seven, day eight, and you keep going and you keep going until you achieve what you need to achieve. Know your reason why you want to be no contact, why you need to be no contact. Write a list of all the negatives that that narcissistic person brings you. So whenever you doubt the reasons for going no contact, you can check up on that list to remind yourself of the reason as to why you are doing it. No contact isn't usually the difficult part. The difficult part is feeling guilty for doing so. Reminding yourself that you have given them every chance and they have let you down at every chance. You being there for them is only teaching them that it's right to hurt other people. Your job isn't to teach them how they should treat people. Your job is to know yourself how you want to be treated, to learn your values, to learn your beliefs, to learn your boundaries, to leave them to go and live whatever life they want. And if you love them, then leave them to it and focus on you and your life. You cannot help those who are unwilling or unable to recognise their own wrongdoings. And with a narcissist, with their lack of empathy, with their low levels of empathy, they are oblivious to how their behaviour affects other people. They just see that it, it works for them. And whether they do it on purpose, whether they do it intentionally or not, the fact of the matter remains, they don't care as long as they can get away with it. If you can't go no contact, then it needs to be grey rock. So limited contact, know your boundaries, be dull, be boring, don't tell them anything about you, don't ask anything about them, lower your expectations of their level of understanding. You can explain yourself once to them, but if they're not willing to listen to you, your job isn't to try a different way to explain or to explain to them. Again, your job is to recognise that is who they are as a person and that's not the kind of person you want to be around. Step two, if you're finding no contact or grey rock difficult, remind yourself that you need to choose your pain wisely. So what's it going to be? Staying in that toxic cycle is incredibly painful and it just keeps repeating. You might get those high moments, but those low moments soon come back when things aren't going the narcissist way. And walking on eggshells, doing all you can to please a narcissist, all you do is lose yourself and it does not please them. Leaving can be painful when you've put all your hopes, all your dreams, all your desires, when you've built something up with somebody or when you've got an idea in your head of how a relationship should be with your parents, your siblings, a childhood friend, when, when you've known someone for so long, it can be difficult walking away, it can be painful walking away from these things but that pain is temporary because you're going to work through that pain and you're going to work through who you want to be and what you want out of your life now. Staying with them, repeating the cycle over and over again is going to continually cause you pain. It is better to cry now than it is to cry on your birthday for the rest of your life. Choose your pain wisely. 
life is painful, life gets hard. We do have to manoeuvre through things. We do have to learn through our mistakes. And at some point when it comes to the dynamics of a toxic relationship, we have to break the chains and release ourselves from the pain that they are going to bring us because they don't care for us in the way that we care for them. Otherwise they wouldn't treat us in the way they deny that they treat us. Step three, reprogramming your mindset. Most often when you have been around a narcissistic person or raised by a narcissistic person, that voice in your head is no longer yours. That voice in your head is theirs when they're telling you that you shouldn't be wearing something or you shouldn't be doing something or you're not good enough or you, you're not capable. You cannot do that. You have got to start reprogramming your mindset and telling yourself that you can start looking at people who are doing things and recognizing that we are all human there is no difference between you and them other than you have been trained to believe you're not capable and whoever is doing something that you would like to achieve has practiced and worked hard often we don't see the hard work people put in to get themselves somewhere narcissistic people just exploit people to get themselves somewhere and they do hit a downfall at some point. But we have to, yes, learn about the disorder so we can understand what we've been through, understand what they have done to us, recognise patterns of behaviour so we can recognise it in the future with other people. So when we start to question, is it them, is it me? We can go, no, they're blame shifting that on to me and or no, they're, they're trying to guilt trip me, this is my boundary, I'm standing in my truth, if they don't like that, that's who they are, it's best that we part ways now, then we get too far into the relationship. So learning about the disorder helps whilst learning about yourself, learning who you are as a person, learning your standards, learning your values of the behaviour you will and will not accept from those around you because most often we unwittingly accept behaviour from people we should have never accepted because we don't know any difference at the time. So once we do learn the difference, we can break free from that pattern. And it's like everything, re retraining your mind how you speak to yourself is like learning how to write. If, if you're right-handed, it comes naturally to write with your right hand. If you start trying to write with your left hand, it's going to be painful. It's going to be hard. It's going to be difficult. And you might fall into the trap of going back to your right hand because it's easier to write with that hand. And you've got to keep going with the left hand to get that. And that's the same with your brain. You control your brain. You've got to continuously tell yourself that you are no longer going to talk to yourself in that way. You are going to start talking to yourself in the right way. Losing those negative, toxic people from your life and starting to find people who ins inspire you, who give you the drive, who give you the push. People who are confident within their own abilities and want to raise other people up. Not people who are arrogant and drag other people down to feel better about themselves walk alongside people with similar belief systems to you, starting new hobbies to break that trauma bond and make new friends relating to that hobby, knowing that they actually are interested in that too and they're not just mirroring who you are as a person to tell, sell you something that's never meant to be. Step four, strengthen and redefine your circle of friends doesn't matter it's it's quality over quantity and it doesn't matter whether you only have one or two good friends or 10 or 20 good friends redefine your circle of friends the more you are around people who are down the more they are going to bring you down you can only help those who are willing to help themselves and you can't tell anybody how to live their life you can only offer advice you can only offer guidance if if they want to take on board that advice then they do if they don't 
great recognizing people for who they are we're human we we have moments where life gets hard we have moments where we question ourselves we have moments where we doubt ourselves we don't walk away from people just because they're having a rough patch we can help those as they would help us and that's the key difference would they be there for you when you need them as you are there for them when they need you. If they are only ever loyal to their need of you and they are not loyal when you need them, it's time to cut them loose and redefine your friendship circle. You may have been isolated from support by the narcissist. You might have isolated yourself from going in the survival mechanisms. So you might have isolated yourself from the gaslighting, fearing that people are just not going to understand you, fearing of judgment from other people. Whether you've isolated yourself or whether the narcissist has isolated you, usually it's a bit of both. It's the narcissist gaslighting and treatment that causes you to then, and the narcissist causing argument that causes you to then isolate yourself from people for fear of reactions from them and if you have been isolated go back and speak to those friends and family members because most likely if that happened to someone that you loved and cared about and they approached you afterwards you would try to help them you would do what you could good people will recognize because they will feel how you feel and they will try to help you out people who aren't them it's horrible, but they're not the people you need in your life. Step five, work on your desires, work on your soul, work on your spirits, work on your happiness, work on your dreams. Narcissists have a cunning ability to cheat people out of joy, pleasure, dreams, desires, hopes, finances, family, friends. They narcissists cheat people out of these. And it's up to us to rebuild these things for ourselves. Surround yourself with people or with information that inspires you. If you're feeling down in the dumps, you don't want to watch a miserable soap or a miserable movie. You need to be watching something that's going to lift your spirits, that's going to raise you back up, that's going to awaken something within you to give you a passion to get up and go again. Listening to those motivational videos, getting in some exercise, mindfulness, yoga, meditation, doing anything you can to lift your spirits. Reach out to people who want to raise you up. Surround yourself with inspiring people, even if it's just people that are online to begin with, until you can find people around you in person. Lose the gossips out of your life. Yes, we can all gossip, but it's, it's usually truth of the people are speaking. Those that are just in it from the gossip, walk away from those. Those who talk to you about people will be talking about you to people. The difference is, with a narcissistic person, they are going to hold a grudge. So they are going to talk negatively about somebody. Not only are they going to talk negatively about somebody, they're going to try and influence your opinion on that somebody. With good people, when something happens, they might go to someone and say, oh, this happened, I'm not sure, was it me? Did did I do something? Am I reading too much into this? Or what, yes, narcissistic people can do that too. But you, you know from the person whether they are talking about everybody to you, or if it's an isolated incident that they're trying to work through, they'll not be trying to damage the character of the other person. They'll not be trying to influence how you think of the other person. They'll be trying to look for a solution. A narcissist is looking to divide and conquer. The more you find things that inspire you, the more you find things that give you the happiness, that give you the joy to spring out of bed in the morning. And even when we have that, we can still have those days where we're like, I really don't want to get up today. It happens. Life hits sometimes and it hits hard. But the more we can have something to focus on that inspires us, that helps us through our life, the less the games of the narcissist are going to impact us because 
we're moving past that, we're moving on from that, we're creating a new life for ourselves. Which leads on to step six, creating those new dreams, those new passions, those new visions for your future. The narcissist might have stolen your old ones, doesn't mean you can't create new ones or make old ones work for you. Whatever your dreams are to you, whatever you enjoy doing, whatever you enjoy talking about, whatever you are fascinated about, that is something that you have a passion for and an interest for. And like everything in life, things get hard, no matter how much you enjoy it. At times, things get difficult. Things can be a struggle, no matter how good it is. We are human. We have emotions. We have situations that happen around us. But if you've got a passion for it, it's going to keep you going in those moments of doubt. Sometimes you have to stop and recognise how far you've come and not how far you've got to go. Step seven, forgive yourself. Forgive yourself for walking away from people who will happily walk away from you if you're not meeting a need of their own. Forgive yourself for forgiving those when you should have finally walked away from them and recognise that you have walked away from them now. Forgive yourself for giving people too many chances. Forgive yourself for not knowing what situation you were in at that time. Forgive yourself for anything and everything that you feel any form of guilt or remorse about and recognise that we learn from mistakes. To fail is our first attempt in learning. We might take a few attempts in learning something. People, some people get things straight away. Some people take five, six, seven, 20 attempts to get something and understand something. It depends on the life you've lived. It depends on the influence around you. There's various factors as to whether we learn the first time or the 21st time. Forgive yourself for not knowing things that you now know. Remember, forgiveness is for you. Forgiveness is to help you move forward. If you want to forgive somebody who's wronged you, that is down to you. As long as you can move forward with your life, whether you forgive them or not, as long as you can move forward with your life, it's down to you as an individual. And remember, if you do want to forgive someone, forgiving them is not to excuse their behaviour. They are still in their wrong. What they did was wrong. Forgiving them is to know that they just is who they are as a person and you're not going to allow them to treat you that way anymore because you recognise that's who they are as a person. You forgive them for being that kind of person but you're now going to go this way far away from them. If anyone has any advice on what helped them recover from narcissistic abuse, please do add that into the comments because you never know who's reading through that it might give that light bulb moment to, that it might help. We are all individuals so what works for one person doesn't necessarily work for another and what works for one person might work for another person. So if you have any advice on what helped you, what step helped you recover or move forward, please do add that into the comments. I shall add into the description why we have to stop explaining ourselves to narcissistic people and start disarming narcissistic people. I know this video is how seven steps to take to move on with your life, especially when narcissists are coming in. The more you focus on your life, the less you're going to focus on them and their games and whatever they're doing. The more you're focused on you, the less you're going to focus on your future, the less you're going to focus on your future. The more you focus on you, the more you're going to focus on your future and the less you're going to focus on your past, the less you're going to focus on those who just seek to hurt you, just seek to bring you down, the less you're going to focus on what they're doing and what they're up to because you're beginning to bring your focus onto you, your life, your joy, your happiness, your passions, what you want to achieve. Thank you very much for listening and I hope everyone has an amazing day.